Welcome to another episode of In The Zone. I am your host, Chris Broussard, and we've got another outstanding show for you this week. Great, insightful interview with Kenyon Martin, one of my favorite ex-NBA players to talk to. Of course, we got Knocked Down Jay with Jason McIntyre, and it gets heated this week. He even starts slamming things around, so you definitely want to check that out. But first, as always, we have to hit the top five. And this week, of course, is NBA All-Star Weekend. One of the greatest parts of the weekend, probably the highlight for most people, is the Slam Dunk Contest. And so that got a brother to thinking. What are the top five NBA Slam Dunk Contest performances of all time? Not the best five dunks, not the best five contests, but the best five individual performances that anyone has put on in the dunk contest. So I'm gonna hit you with that. At number five, Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Going back to 1988, now let me say this. Michael Jordan is the most graceful dunker and probably the most graceful player ever to play in the NBA. Jordan could do things that other players did and it just would look better. You know how it look, Michael Jackson, tremendous dancer. A lot of people could moonwalk. Heck, I could moonwalk, but I could do his moves and it never looked as good as Michael Jackson doing it. That's what it was like with Michael Jordan. He did dunks that other players could do, but the way he moved his legs, the way his body moved, the tongue out, the arms, the way he held things, it just looked better. At number four, the best game dunker in history, Vince Carter. Now you're like, wow, number four, that goes back to the year 2000. Vince Carter lit it up from the get-go. Very first dunk, he ended the contest with a reverse windmill 360. Reverse windmill 360, meaning he jumped the opposite way and did a 360. Of course, he also put the elbow in the rim. He went from a foot or two inside the foul line, two-handed, and remember, he's a two-footed dunker, so to do that off one foot was impressive. Vince Carter was tremendous. Caught an alley-oop off the bounce from Tracy McGrady, went between the legs. The best game dunker of all time, Vince Carter at number four. At number three, Zach Levine, 2016. I know this one shocks you, because Zach won it that year with a tremendous battle with Aaron Gordon. I would say the best dunk contest in NBA history. Zach, of course, goes from a foot inside the free throw line between the legs. I mean, not Kobe Bryant, not J.R. Ryder. None of these guys had done that. It was ridiculous. Now, Zach, not as graceful, he's graceful, Not as graceful as Michael Jordan. Nothing's moving, the legs aren't moving, the butt isn't shaking, the arms aren't going all every which way, the elbows aren't out when he dunks. It's just smooth, straight line, bam, he did it. Alley-oop also from a foot inside the foul line. Zach Levine at number three. At number two, (laughs) Dwight Howard, 2008. Look, I never thought I would ever see a man that big, like say 6'10", winning the slam dunk contest. I know Larry Nance in 1984 beat Dr. J. It was the first dunk contest in NBA history. (laughs) Dwight Howard in 2008 came up with the most creative dunks imaginable, fathomable. I mean, it would, he just wowed us with his creativity and these incredible athletic feats. I mean, to put anybody ahead of Vince Carter and Zach Levine and Michael Jordan, you know it had to be outrageous. Dwight Howard at number two. At number one, this is a shocker, but I watched it and I gotta give him this due. Aaron Gordon, 2016. Now I know you're saying, wait a minute, he lost. Zach Levine won. Aaron Gordon finished runner up. He did, but watch it again. Aaron Gordon had the best dunks. That was the best performance in slam dunk history. And Aaron, you got robbed. You didn't get your props. 
So Chris Broussard is giving you your props, man. Soak it up, enjoy it, celebrate. Now let, let me say this before I go. The NBA dunk contest, these are world-class dunkers, world-class athletes, okay? The difference between the best and the fifth or 10th place person is minuscule. It's this much. It's like in track and field. The difference between gold in the 100 meter dash and no medal is a 10th of a second or maybe hundredths of a second. You, so with world-class athletes, that's the difference. We can no longer have whole numbers, seven, eight, nine, or 10 on a scale of one to 10. We have got to bring decimal points in, I'm sorry. That's, we have to have a better way to differentiate because every 10 dunk or 50 dunk with five judges is not the same. It's not created equal. We need a way to differentiate between the best of the best. So I say you go seven. 7.5, 8, 8.5, 9, 9.5, 10. At the least you need to do that. So there's more differentiation. Or you can just have decimal points, period. 8.1, 8.7, 8.5, whatever you want to give it, 8.8. .8. But they need to add decimal points to the dunk contest because it is just, these guys are all so good that you have to have a way to differentiate. You heard it here first on In The Zone. Write Adam Silver, write your favorite team. Let them know, oh, Broussard had a great idea for the dunk contest judging, and maybe, just maybe, it'll be implemented. I'm out, Aaron Gordon, props. All right, Kenya, man, welcome to In The Zone. Yes, Kenya Martin, we're here in LA. Obviously, the All-Star Game is coming up this weekend. Yeah. You were an all-star in 2004. And I just want to ask you, like, what is it like? I mean, you want to make the NBA. You obviously want to play the best you can. What is it like to be chosen for the all-star team? Um, I know what it's like to be chosen and know what it's like to be snug. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's, uh, it's a great feeling, man. Um, you know, you see the game before you get in, in the league. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You see the fun, and that's what, like, the fans get to vote on and other uh, – um, coaches get the vote on as well. But to be an all-star in this league, um, it's a great feeling, um, especially when you, you're young mm -hmm. and um, your heart, the hard work that you've put in pays off. Uh, so it was a great feeling for me, um, making it in 04. Um, should have made it in 03. I was going to ask you, how many um, years you think you should have made no, it? Uh, definitely in 03. We were first in the conference. The numbers were pretty much the same. Yeah, too. same numbers. Um, the game was in Atlanta. They needed to put somebody in the, from Atlanta on the team, so they put Sharif on the team. Okay, okay. Go Sharif figure Sharif Abdul Rahim. Yeah, like yeah. Not, not taking nothing against him. He was playing well, but their team wasn't yeah. doing well. We got J. Kidd in, so I thought we should have had, I'm saying, a couple guys. Yeah. Um, so the next year, we got a couple guys in. We thought we should have had three guys in. You know what I'm saying? We thought RJ should have made it as well. Yeah. You know, so it's like one of them things. Um, but no, it was a great feeling, man. Um, they didn't know what to expect going into the game. So you talk to the guys that's in the locker room, guys that's been there before, and you know, they told them just go out and play. Go out and have fun, enjoy the, uh, enjoy the moment, but just go out and play. Uh, did, that's what I did. A lot of people criticize the All-Star game. I think the last few years, it's, it's been really good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's been when you joke. played in 03, yeah. 04, I mean, how competitive was it? It was competitive for most of the game, and, and, and it revved up I'm saying, in the fourth quarter. Okay. Like guys trying to go get that W. You know, but it was competitive throughout. It wasn't a whole lot of easy how it is now. Yeah, you know, man, yeah. Just dunk after dunk after dunk after dunk after dunk. There was other stuff that you had to do then. But, no, nah, they've made it into a, just a, um, a glorified pickup game. Yeah, it's terrible. You know, you know so um, I think the money incentive this year, 100000 for the winners, twenty five for the losers, I think that. You do think? Because yeah, obviously y'all yeah, yeah, making yeah. a lot of money anyway. Still, but. still though, we ain't, listen, you ain't turning down nothing like that, trust me. <laughs> Like somebody willing to give you an extra hundred thousand. So for the winners get a hundred and losers twenty five. What'd y'all get? Did y'all get I anything? Yeah, I don't, I don't remember what it was. But it wasn't yeah, at yeah, this point. Yeah, yeah, no, it wasn't nothing like this. Um, but now, then, um, I think if we would have won it, um, I think I had a shot at MVP because I, I played well. How many did you have? You like remember? seventeen or something okay. like that. Okay. Seven, and it wasn't too far off the whoever had the most yeah, in that game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So had my point guard there with me, you know, so he made yep, sure I Jake. got some easy ones. You know, so, so, nah, it was fun, man. It was a great experience. It was here in L.A., you know, so yeah. nah, it was um, it was great. I had a good time, um, off-the-court experience, everything that went on, all the festivities, 
you know, so it was a great time. What What is it like? Because I, I actually feel like there's so much going on All-Star Weekend mm -hmm. that by the time the game comes around, it's almost like an after, like, at least for us. The yeah, because around. guys are burnt out. Yeah. Especially if you have a lot of obligations, man. A lot of engagements, going here to speak on this, mm -hmm. going to visit this, going to do that. Yeah, it can get tiring. That's why some guys, like, they like they cool with not coming. Yeah, you know, yeah. Even yeah. if they've been an All-Star for years and this, they won, like, the, um, like this year with CP, uh, he probably like, I want to be there, but yeah, ooh, yeah, I get the break. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. no, nah, but um, it's six and one half dozen at that time. You know what I'm saying? But some guys, like you said, by Sunday, if fans, if, you're, if you've been to jam session, the dunk contest, the three-point, the rookie challenge, and all yeah. that, by the All-Star game you come, all party, yeah. by the time the game come, you like, <laughs> I'm bro, I, I don't know. You, do, you want to buy these tickets or you want these tickets to go? You know, so no, it's just one of them situations, man, where it could be a lot on everybody. Um, but if it's if you haven't experienced it, then it's yeah. definitely an experience that you should have. You know what I'm saying. What do you think? You said now it's a joke. Why do you think it's become what it has? It's, um, I think it's the same thing as the Pro Bowl. You know, I think. Well, Pro Bowl at least do you know get hurt. Yeah, I mean, but still, you know but, I mean. I, but I just think they look at it as as a it's a fun game. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, they don't look at it as it should be competitive because it doesn't mean it. It's not going on our record. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, we're not getting game checked for it, so to speak. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I guess it's just one of them situations where it's, it's like I said, it's become a glorified pickup game. You know, guys chasing the MVP, mm -hmm. guys going out, mm -hmm. seeing, trying to break the previous scoring record or the three point <laughs> record. I'm saying, all, so I think all that goes on and, and the way the game is wide open right now, it's easy. You know, so, guys, many threes, yeah, yeah, so many yeah. threes, and you got guys like KD and Steph that, and James that could, you know what I'm saying, they score at alarming rate. Yeah. You know, they they can score 30 in a quarter, and they, especially in that game yeah. because there ain't yeah. no defense. <laughs> you know, so I think guys want to get that MVP and game wide open now and l lack of defense during the regular season. Man. You think there's more lack of, like, the defense isn't as good mm -hmm. now? Yeah. I look at the scoring increase is, is just because they shooting and hitting more threes. That too. But you think the D is in the Just imagine, because for one guy scared, like it's like the NBA, like the rule change has made the game soft. Not the players, the rules. Yeah, you can't even. The rules hit, have made, the, you know what I'm saying? So it's wide open now. You can't touch guys, you can't yeah. hand check, freedom of movement, you can't do this. And they shoot more threes. So now it's going to be more scoring than guys like, uh, yeah. no hard fouls, yeah. you guys Layup, to let wide open dunk after wide open dunk. Guys going through the paint, nobody contesting them. Mm -hmm. Like so, all of it. So mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. no defense is deaf. But you have you, uh, you still have defensive minded coaches and some solid defensive teams. San Antonio, the Golden yeah. States. Uh, I know Tom Thibodeau mindset is the defense, but his guys yeah, not there team. yet. You know what I'm saying? His guys not there yet. Yeah, but yeah. you have certain guys that that's what they believe in still, and those are the successful teams. I think. Yeah. You know. Um, but no, yeah, I just think the rule change, man, has made the game soft and lack of defense goes into that. Yeah. You know, guys scared the hard foul. Guys don't want to get it's just you it's shoot, a bunch you get of flagrant too. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of, all of that. So guys trying to stay on the court now and like I said, all of the freedom of movement rules mm -hmm. and like all, all of that plays a factor in the bad defensive team. I know you were traded to yeah. Denver, but it was kind of, it was a signing trade. trade. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you you made a decision basically to go there as a free agent. Yeah. Well, no, nah, they made the decision what, for me. But because they couldn't match the deal. No, oh, they Denver didn't offer. They didn't offer nothing. So they did. Did, did Denver Jersey front load never, the deal? No, nah, no, 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 no. So they did. Uh, Jersey, Jersey did. never offered me a contract. Period. I turned down after my third year. They offered me six for sixty six. Okay. I turned it down. I was, I was supposed to. I thought I was an all star. Yeah. Yep. The way they was passing that money out then, <laughs> they just gave J Kid one oh five or whatever it was or one oh four. Okay. Well, big See, part of this. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah what I'm yeah. saying like we. Somebody gotta catch those alley oops. <laughs> like on both sides of the ball, like this don't go without me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm gonna ride it out. So I turned down to sixty six. Like eleven a million a year like, is great money. Don't, yeah. tell you, don't give me. I'm not blowing my nose, thumbing my nose at it. It's great money. But I turned it down. I'm like, you know, I'm going to play it out. Yeah. So I went into that year and I made the All-Star team. So I had that. To, like, yep. All right, I'm yep. an All-Star now. So yep. now what y'all going to do? We not going to call you. That's what we going to do. <laughs> so it was like that? No call. Dang. No call. 
So what they say after, how they explain what, what they did? Nothing. They couldn't. It was Bruce Radner. He was the majority owner. So he just didn't want to pay. It was him. So the front office would have. Everybody. Because it was at Rod. Rod, Rod man, Rod Thorne's wife cried, man. When I left, they lost half of their season ticket holders. Wow. Like, yeah, that was the deal. Look, I didn't get yeah. back to the finals after that. At all. Ain't yeah. been nowhere near it. <laughs> um, so, no, nah, it was just uh, it's decisions that's made. So I made the decision then. Like, So I called J. Kidd, like, yo, man. Like, they ain't, like, hey, they ain't offer me nothing. They ain't heard from him. He like, hey, man, you know, I love playing with you, man, but you got to do what you got to do. So he understood. It wasn't like yeah. he was like, yo, man. Yeah, no, nah, like I would like, if, listen, if they would have offered me 80, I'd stay. You got 90 over how many years was it? Seven. Seven years, yeah, 90. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So if they offer me 80, I stay. So after you got the offer from Denver, did you, you still didn't talk to the Nets? No. They still didn't no, like? No, nothing. So y'all can either let him go for nothing or get some back. And that's why they did the sign and trade. Wow. Wow. So to maximize the dollar to sign and trade, I, I, I signed for seven years. So wow. the rest is history. How, how tough was that to move on? Oh, it was it was. Yeah, you number one pick somewhere. You mm-hmm. team in the basement when you get there. Yeah. Make it two straight finals. You're all star. You're like, I'm going to be here for a while. I had just bought a new house. Mm-hmm. Like, I was in my house for a year. Not even mm-hmm. a year. Yeah. So, no, nah, it was some situations, man. Like, you're like, wow. Then then I realized, like, it's cutthroat. It's a business. So that's when you knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Early on. I was 26, whatever it was. You know what I'm, yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, these people don't care. <laughs> no matter what you doing on the court, I thought basketball was like we winning. Yeah, yeah. Like we, like we doing well. Like it was, but now, but they showed me right then and there that it wasn't about nothing, nothing more but making money for them. Well, you had, I mean, you played with some great point guards: J. Kidd, Chauncey, Andre Miller. Andre Miller. <laughs> Is he? Nah. You put him with them? I, Dre's, I, he, he, Dre's he up there, man. He's underrated. Assist. He's underrated, man. Yeah. I think he's underrated as a point guard. He don't get the accolades and stuff that Jay Kidd and Johnson got because they won championships and yeah. the numbers and all that. But no, Dre was a good one. I like Dre. Who you feel was the best point guard you played with? Not AI. I know he's the best player. You like Jay Kidd, man. Okay. Um, but me and Johnson got a rapport. Like, like, like when me and Jay Kidd first got on the team together, we didn't talk about how we were gonna play. Okay. How we was gonna lobs and defensively, how our intensity and all that. We didn't talk about that. We just went out and did that it. Just happened. Just did it. We was on the same. Accord yeah. and went out and played. Same thing with me and Chauncey. Chauncey came. It was like it was a, it was the same mindset. Okay. So we go to the film. We're gonna play hard. We're gonna be. I'm gonna think the game through. We're gonna talk it. Just yeah. it worked. Yeah. You know. So I think when you have guys that that's, that when there's one goal, and that's winning by any means, then it works. You know. You don't have to talk about it. You go out and you do your job. And I think that's what me and J K did well together. Uh, and that's what me and Chauncey did well together. We go out and we, we understand the game. We understand okay. time, score, situations, and everything that goes on with the game. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you know, it'll be things that I'll be watching the game that Chauncey's doing um, the countdown thing. I'll watch the game and I'll think something and he'll say it. You know <laughs> At the break. Yeah, you know, or, or, or like, yeah, like, or yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Or before, like, I'm thinking why, and he'll say it. And I'll text him, man, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He already know automatically, like, automatically know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Like just like on our pick and roll thing when he was in Denver, he'd come down. We didn't talk about. It. He'd come down here. This. I. He come down here. This. I know. Like it was just. I know what you need. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Yep, yep. Like I know you just ain't smacking yourself because you like. <laughs> no, nah, you don't screen here. You know what I'm saying you. I know that already. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So we don't want like, just some of those things. So that he we, didn't even have to say when I smack my leg. Yeah. No. Nah, I know what that is. Wow. Oh, you walking down? All right. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to get him low. All right, I'll wait. I'll mm-hmm. wait. Like that's just knowing the game, being basketball savvy, and knowing what I'm saying. That's what, like a lot of that is. Now Chauncey, correct me if I'm wrong. He was real vocal on the court. Yes. Right. And Jay Kidd, I heard, was not vocal. Not so much. So, how was that? Because one of um somebody was telling me like Jay Kidd, he was better just running up and down. Just playing basketball. Because in a half court, he didn't talk a lot. So. He wasn't, you know, his strength was more. Yeah, just offensively, yeah, but defensively, he was all over. He didn't have to talk really. I mean, he did when it needed to be like back screens, like all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. But no, nah, like you knew, like it, J. K. could close out over here. They swing it. He gonna tag, get the rhythm. Like he gonna, he, he's a helper. That's what he does. Like me, I'm vocal. 
Okay. And I'm doing both. I'm vocal and I'm all over the Were place. Were you kind of the vocal leader of those yeah, days? Yeah, I think so. Because that, that's just me. That's my personality. Like, I was a young guy came in and I had a bunch of vets, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't really have to be mm-hmm. my rookie year. But then we started winning and all that. I just went back to what I did at Cincinnati. You know, I was a leader then. Mm-hmm. You know I mean? So I just went back to that. And after that year, it just continued. You know, I just I was myself. You know, yeah. I was just let every because I, I think basketball. I know the game. No, it's not coming from a bad place. I might might give you a few, I'm saying, four letter words and <laughs> here and there, you know what I'm saying? But no, nah, it's like I like I know the game and I know yeah. what I'm talking about. You know well, I'm, you you were we were on Undisputed yeah. earlier. And this is a little different. You talking about the pecking order in the mm-hmm. league and stuff with players. On teams, as mm-hmm. as media, we always look at it as so and so's team mm-hmm. or he's the first option, he's the second option, yeah. he's third, whatever. <laughs> How much do players put into that? How much do players really look at and understand a pecking order on the team? It's, well, I never experienced it being talked about. It's just, you, you get how certain guys are being treated. It's how much money you're making. Mm-hmm. A lot of it is how much money. You so make. it's it's not based from a player standpoint. It's not so much he's our best player. Not he at should all. be number one. Not at all. Really. Certain situations, yeah. Like LeBron. Like you said. knew Melo. Yeah. Like Denver. come in. Yeah, yeah, okay. Like he was gonna be the score. We knew that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but you didn't look like Melo. Like I was like I was the leader of that team. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You were the leader. Okay. Yeah. Melo okay. was the leading scorer. He did all that, but <laughs> I looked at myself as the leader of that team. Okay. You know. Um, and he was cool because he yeah, ain't yeah, really yeah, vocal yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's not who he is. And Melo, yeah. he'll go out and play. I'm going to go out and my number's going to speak for itself. So you didn't feel like this is Melo's team? Not at all. You felt like we a team or yeah. did you feel like it was your team? No, nah, we a team. Lead? Okay. We're in this together. Like, I'm, I'm not more important than you. You ain't more important. You might average more points than me. Mm-hmm. Like, um, excuse me. You might average more points than me. Marcus Cameron might average more rebounds or whatever the case may be. But when it's all said and done, they, everybody know who they can turn to. You know, everybody around there, like, that's big homie. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, that's, <laughs> like, that's, that's who we are. Like, when it's time to get down into it, you know where I'm at. You know where to find mm-hmm. me. You know what I'm about. You know, uh, if we're in the trenches together. I got your back, your front, your side. You know what I'm <laughs> like, I'm your team, man. I'm your guy. Yeah. You know, well, and I let you know that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Melo just go, he going to go out and hoop, which no problem with that. Yeah. Like, no problem with guys that go out, silence, and go out and do their job. I'm going to give you this work. I'm going to laugh at you, <laughs> like Melo do, score on you, laugh at you going back down the court. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Me, I'm going to get in your face, yeah, and I'm going to be on the bench, ah, 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 and we get, ah, 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 like that's, <laughs> that's me. You know what I'm saying? So, but I, like I said, I looked at myself when things got tough during the timeouts and something needed to be said, I said it. We're in the locker room, something needed to be said, I said it. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're in the meeting, something needed to be said, I said it. I, I wasn't waiting on the next person to do it or the coach to do it or the coach. No, no, no. it need to be done and said, I'm going to do it. So when you see, because I'm sure this was the case, and there, it's portrayed as Melo's team. Yeah, yeah. Does it not that you mad at Melo, but does it ever bother you that and it could be any team? We always portray it as somebody's team, mm-hmm. whoever's really pretty much probably the leading scorer. Yeah, that's where it goes. Does that ever mess with players? Some guys, when you know this some ain't guys, really the reality. Some guys it might. If they're not comfortable, they're insecure. Like I didn't need to go tell nobody. It's my team. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's my team. <laughs> Voice get deep every time. More team. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't need to do all that. But everybody in that locker room knew. You know what I'm saying? Like some guys feel a certain way. Some guys need that, like to hear that. But some guys, they, I, you know what it is. Yo, it's his team. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm mm-hmm. But like you said, more than time than not, it's guys who lead the team to score and is looked at as that guy. Yeah. Whether they want like Kawhi is not that. That's that. He's not that. It's not that. Yeah, yeah. That's not. But him. gonna give you this work. Mm-hmm. Man, so who else? So you got to get that from somewhere else, and it can't be pop all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, Lamarcus Aldridge. I don't think he's that. It can't, it can't be pop all the time. You know what I'm saying so. Each team, like LeBron, is a voice, the best player, and he's the voice. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying so. It just goes that Lord way State sometimes. Probably Draymond. Draymond. Right? He's probably not yeah. the best player on the team, but he's Draymond or Andre Iguodala, somebody. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Somebody else. You know. So you look at it as. Like, it ain't always the guy who's leading the team scoring that the people look to when things get tough. You know, yeah. they, when we need a bucket, all right, here you go. But when thing, <laughs> other things going on, there'd be other guys at, at times. 
But some situations, it, it's that guy that's leading the team in scoring and is the voice. Like you got Kobe and yeah. LeBron's and like Michael Jordan's and situated Charles Barkley's and situations like that where they the guy, they the outspoken guy as well. You know, but that's not all the time. Yeah. Who do you think, who do you watch today and say, oh, that's a defender? Draymond. That's a great, okay. Clay. Yeah, Clay don't get enough what? credit for his defense. Man, he moved them puppies. <laughs> Listen, it ain't tough to stay in front of Kyrie. Boy did a hell of a job. Yeah. Like, he got it off, but still, yo, <laughs> that boy moved them feet, man. Um, Kawhi. Um, I like Jimmy Butler. Um, yeah. I like Avery Bradley. Uh, showed a clip the other day, young boy in Phoenix, um, Jackson. Oh, Josh, Josh Jackson, Jackson. Yeah, showed yeah, a clip yeah. of him moving them puppies. Okay. And like, I like that. <laughs> then, like, no, nah, like, I used to, like, most bigs, guys with bigs in the league, like, they try to stay out of switches, pick and roll. Yeah. Switch. <laughs> you ain't mind getting on the Switch. Guy. AI, CP, Kobe, you name it. I want it. Yeah. Steve France, you name it, man. I want it. Switch. <laughs> so then y'all switch again back here. So you ain't stuck on the big, but. Yeah. Switch. Yeah. Like, we playing New Orleans in the playoffs. Like, they doing everything in their power to put Nene in the pick and roll. Keep him out of it. Like, no. I want, man, I, it's personal. Yeah. Like, you scoring me is personal. <laughs> like, I'm trying to, my best not, like, it took, it was a learning experience for me to take, like, to concede two points. Dude, so you mean some people. Like, if I'm in foul, if I, okay, if okay, I get okay. my first foul early. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I got to <laughs> give up a layup. Like, it's, that's tough for me. Yeah. Like, I don't want it to score. And players value that. Yeah. Way, way more than the, the media. Yeah. Like, the players in the league know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, teammates. I, yeah, all like, all that. Like, like, oh. like, I tell my son that now. KJ, you get one early, dog, yeah, you got to back off. Mm-hmm. And, he, and he can't. So he has the approach to defense that you... Yeah, like he want to stop you. It's personal. Because okay. I'm telling him that all, there's nothing more intimidating in sports when you can't score. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing more intimidating in any sport when you can't score. Yeah. Speaking of LeBron, obviously everybody's speculating what he mm-hmm. should do. I mean, I'm sure you feel like, look, he can do whatever he wants. Yeah. But <laughs> do you think stay in Cleveland, stay in the East? I or think so. I, I don't know why, just how you spoke about um, the whole all-star thing, right? Mm-hmm. And the votes and, and um, selections and yeah. all that. I'm looking at, the, on a bigger stage, the finals. Yeah. He's going right now for his eighth straight trip to the finals. In the West, you might, second round, you playing San Antonio. Yeah. <laughs> That yeah. would only been three trips. Yeah, to you know anyway. what I'm saying. Yeah, you, you know, know what I'm saying. Just think. Got, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's like, do you do you risk that? Because you plan to be the most declarated mm-hmm. NBA champion player of all time. That's what you're shooting for. It's gonna be tough, but you got goals and aspirations yeah, to pass yeah. Kobe, Michael Jordan, those guys. You doing that in the West? Probably not. Uh, but in the East, you like. Yeah. He gets it's to the next four. What? <laughs> this is a breeze. Well, well, that's so he gets a lot of. He's three and five in the finals. Uh-huh. He gets a lot of flack for basically a loser record in the, in the East, finals. Being yeah. in the East, being playing in, against lesser competition. Yep, and, and night getting in, there and losing. It's tough. So, do you think? I, I don't know how he looks at it, but some people, Chris Carter, who's on mm-hmm. our first things first. Yeah, he says LeBron is better off going west and not even reaching the finals. Rather than being in the East and keep, keep going losing. back, but keep losing. What, what's your thought? Like if he's three and seven, three and eight in the finals or whatever. But you gave yourself a chance. That's what I feel. Yeah. And that's you impressive to keep getting there too. Like you gave yourself a chance. Like, of course you want to sprinkle some wins in there if you don't want to keep going and losing like mm-hmm. the Bills. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no, like, like that ain't, ain't, ain't no fun in that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like he, he got something to lean on. He got three. Of course, you like you want to be more, but like it's. You look at it like, but you're going to the West, and it might not be, but he might be up for that challenge. Mm-hmm. There might be a challenge of his. There might be a goal that he's he's probably set every other goal. Um, uh, he's in uh, accomplished every other goal he has set mm-hmm. so far. So there might be another goal. You know what I'm saying go out. I'm saying wake it, Western Conference team to the finals. There might yeah. be, never know, but. It's going to be tough, you know what I'm saying? Wherever you go, it's tough to win a championship. 
as you, he knows. You think – I know you like the Cleveland trades at the deadline. Definitely, Do you definitely. think they can get to a point where they can compete with Golden State? They get better defensively, yes. And they got – it looks like these dudes can be good defenders because they're I think athletic. They can. They, and, they're younger. Yeah. They got guys that's going to buy in to whatever is going on. They don't – they ain't comfortable mm-hmm. in their bank account. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. True. Um, they trying to – get what LeBron has already, a couple guys have on that team, which is a championship. They're trying to get that. So you're going to do whatever. Mm-hmm. Whatever they ask of you, you're going to do. So I think them making that move was great. But changing half of the roster, great. People Cleveland probably was like, I don't know, but did what's best for the organization mm-hmm. in order to try to keep the keep king, the yeah, keep yeah. the king yeah. happy, yeah, in yeah. their words, I'm saying. <laughs> you got to keep him happy. And you saw the smile on his face game one. LeBron happy. So that's all that mattered to them. Now, another thing, LeBron, LeBron is, is not shy about we need more help. Yeah. We need more help. Or the implication when, like, as a free agent, like, I might leave to get better teammates, right? There's that impl- what does that do to the locker room? Does that negatively imp- can that negatively impact guys when the feeling is – he might leave because we not good enough, or he's saying we need better teammates, or what? The guy's got to look in the mirror then, I think. Okay, so you don't put that, that's not LeBron's problem. No, it's okay. on management. You know, it's on the guys that's in there. Like, I need to get better. He don't think I'm good enough. Okay. I don't think, like, people look at stuff like that as bad. There's nothing wrong with pressure. He putting pressure on management, he putting pressure on his teammates, he putting pressure on the coaches. Yep. We got to be at the top of our game all the time. Or, you see what happened? <laughs> Taking my act to South Beach. You know what I'm saying? Like, That's right. Like just to like, so, yeah, like, just, just think, like, he doing all he can before he left. Yeah. Before LeBron left Cleveland the first time, he was doing all he could to yeah. make it to the finals, getting swept. All, yeah. Just imagine, he's young, all that's on him. But he didn't bring it, yeah. bring it, bring yeah. it. It becomes too much, you know. It becomes too much. So then they get criticized of going to my I'm like, oh, you going to join? Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. Which? What do you on. think of that? And now it's not just him. It's no, everybody's doing it now. It's yeah, everybody. It's been going on. I'm saying like it's it's been going on. He just because he was the biggest name mm-hmm. to ever do it, mm-hmm. you know. So of course people criticize him. Cleveland people made it a thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah, they were hurt. They want they got to stay home, which we get. Yeah. But like at the end of the day, he's a grown man. He can make whatever decision he wants for himself and his family. And like y'all didn't tell him when he decided to come back. You know what? Stay in Miami. <laughs> they was all forgotten. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, stay in Miami. We don't need you. We don't want a championship ever. I'm saying no, y'all didn't say none of that. Yeah. I'm saying so. No, it's like the man make whatever decision he want at the end of the day, and whatever he see benefiting him, and whoever don't like it, and the guys in the locker room. If he if you feel that way, he's gonna leave. Then, well, maybe I need to up my game. If he does leave, I'm in position to. Up, yeah, 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 like so. You, you it could, it's it'll you help can, you either you way. Can, you can open it up and fold it however many different mm-hmm. ways you want to fold it, but ultimately, it's what you're gonna show up and do your job. If you're the GM, what players can I get in here? Presidents, what am I picking the right pieces? Am I getting the right coach? Am I the right staff? Am, am I doing my job? And that's what LeBron doing. He, it ain't a secret that he he holds everybody <laughs> in that organization feet to the fire, which. I don't that's look good, at, yeah. yeah, that's a, that's a good are, are we competing for championships or not at the end of the day? Like, and, and if we not, then I don't want to be here. Mm-hmm. If we don't, if we don't make any moves, this trade deadline, I'm out. Yeah. So guess what they do? They make some moves. More, more <laughs> than not, the team. I'm saying, <laughs> it's a, just, no, just imagine, man. Like, I'm not saying that's conversation. And they better for it, to your point. I'm not, I'm not saying that's conversation we, we had, that he had, or he did. But they looked at the situation yeah, yeah. that right now we're not good enough to compete. We ain't even good enough to keep competing our own conference right now as we look at it. That's like a we got to shake this thing. Yeah. We got to shake this thing. And up. without him, whether it was he wasn't playing as well, sulking, mm-hmm. without that and whatever messages he sent to the front office, 
they might not do all that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They, they might, might have just stayed the course. It out. Yeah. Stay the yeah. course. Like, oh, we've yeah. been we've still been play. here in the previous two seasons where we didn't play well at stretches. Yeah. We still yeah. won one, lost one. That's a good so, point. So, all right, let's roll it out and let's see how it goes for the rest of the season. But now, nah, it's a different dynamic now. Yeah. You know it's a different scenario where he like uh, he only signing for one year or he got a player option for this year and like all these is going on, you know what I'm saying? So all you you, you these conversations have to be had mm-hmm. by management. You know, the players probably not speaking about it as much, but if you management and you had, like you got to be talking about this. Mm-hmm. Like man, we got hey, what can we listen to, right? You yeah. know, trying to keep him happy, <laughs> trying to keep him around here, right? Oh, yeah. some people that might be like, sense. "Ah, but majority in the room going to be like what we got to do." Yeah. To make if he in the room, what we got to do to make him happy? <laughs> if he not in the room, what we got to do to make him happy? Yeah. I'm saying so yeah. no, nah, I just look at them situation where it's like I get it, man. Like, are we trying to win or not? We're not we're not just out here collecting yeah. checks. I'm saying we are going if we win, we're going to do that anyway. And more, you know what I'm saying? We're going so I, I look at yeah, man. You gotta, you gotta be able to compete and gotta put your guys in the best situation possible. I've always been a believer in putting the best, getting the best 15 guys that you can to help us win. Okay. Okay. Like, well, you speaking, I mean, front office. You you were the captain of the big three trilogy, the champions. Yes, sir. How how competitive is the big three? It's very competitive. Um, I think it's going to get better. You got more, more guys who've played against each other for years. Mm-hmm. You know that. Um, what new, what new players coming in this year? Do you know? That Any? signed on as co-captains already, because they added a, each team could get a third captain. A third, okay. So, so it's a captain. It was, it's three captain, three co-captains basically. Whatever how you want to classify okay. it. So um, I know Carlos Boos is signed on already to um, the Ghost Ballers with okay. Mike Bibby and Ricky Davis. Okay. He's on that team. Um, Glenn Davis, Big Baby signed with, uh, I think, the Power team, which is Catino and Corey Maggetti. Okay. Um, Drew Gooden signed on with Three's Company, which is a- coached by AI, him and DeMar Johnson. So AI is still gonna coach. He's, he's not coach, gonna play. Not gonna just, play. just coach. Okay. Nate Robinson and I think Rasheed Wallace signed on with Tri-State, which is Jermaine O'Neal's team. Um, so you got a few other guys that's going to be in the draft pool that's mm-hmm. played a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marquise Daniels, Josh Powell, um, uh, just n- n- names of people. People like just names. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't off top, but then it's gonna be fun, man, and, and even more competitive this year. Do you you keep in touch with J Kid and would you have you talked to him about trying to play maybe getting into the big three? Nah, J Kid that he'll play some serious. J Kid can't play no basketball. He done play. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can't see him playing after uh, having that done. Yeah, yeah, hip. Okay, yeah, I didn't even yeah, know he had yeah, 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 definitely. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah, that's that, that's a tough one. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, no, yeah. I wouldn't think J Kid would want to play in this. It's like I can't see Kobe. Or, so you don't see that now? Why not Kobe? I just, just I just, I, just I, I can't see him in this man. KG, you need that. He said he's not. Um, okay. so we pressuring him. Yeah, yeah. We definitely pressing KG. Um, I don't, guys. I, I don't think. Is Pierce guys. playing? You know. He's not gonna play this year. Probably next year, okay. um, unless he just changes mind, get bored. Right yeah. now, need, need to release some energy and all that. Come out, yeah. It's, it's it's fun, man. Like I tell everybody, man. It's it's competitive. It's fun. Um, Quentin Richardson called me the other day, asked me about it. You know, so you got guys who, man, that's. That's in, that, like, mm-hmm. They came out to see it, like when it was near their city or, or in their city, came out to see it. Yeah. Y'all um, was pretty much sold out yeah, just about yeah, everywhere. Yeah, man. Like, it was some smaller venues. Like we went to Tulsa, of course, we expect to set out Lexington, mm-hmm. um, things like that. But no, Dallas was great, New York, um, Chicago, some of the bigger cities. Mm-hmm. Like who was it? The, the people came out to support it. Yeah. All right, man, cool. I'm looking forward to it. Y'all defending again? Oh, we listen, man. We're going to do this thing. I, I, I told them all season long last year. Trilogy. <laughs> Once again, trilogy. All right, you mm-hmm. heard it here first on In The Zone. Great stuff, man. Yes, As sir. always, you always yes, bring it. Good to see you. Appreciate it, brother. All right. All right, as always, got my man Jay Mack, Jason McIntyre. What's happening, brother? Uh, excellent day, Chris. Excellent day. Wonderful week. Just very excited to be here. All right, all right. I'm excited to have you. This is another episode of Knockdown, Jay. I'm being nice to you. Yeah. I'm usually criticizing <laughs> It's Valentine's you. Day. Come it's on. Valentine's I'm day. dressed up. 
Yeah, you look sharp, man. All-star break is here? You look sharp. Come on. All right. I, I like that better than the muscle shirts okay. and your son's little Noted. pajama top or whatever you had on a couple weeks ago. <laughs> but anyway, you got some good topics for me I today? do. I do. Let's start right here. All right. Your Cleveland Cavaliers basically got a new team yeah. at the trade looking, deadline. Looking good, too. You know who else looks good? LeBron James. In yes, the last four much. games since he got wind of the trade, right, the Minnesota game, okay. uh, then there was an Atlanta game, and then the two games with Clarkson and the new unit, LeBron's averaging 30, 13, and 9. 30. 30 points. 30 okay. points. He is rejuvenated. Okay. We're seeing a new locked-in LeBron. Chris, I believe LeBron is the new favorite to win the MVP award this season. I know you've been on the James Harden train for a while. Harden's playing tremendous. Excellent. I believe LeBron will win the MVP this but, season. But you say right now he's yes. the front runner. Yeah, projecting ahead. How in the world could you say he's the front? Off, off those four games We're you gave me? We're seeing a new LeBron James, Chris. Okay. 1,000% new. He's playing new. fantastic. Right. He is excited to be going onto the okay. court now as opposed to when Isaiah Thomas and Derrick Rose and these guys were there. It's a new LeBron. Is it the MVP for the entire season or just post-All-Star break? I believe the award is for the entire season. You're a voter, correct? Yeah, I'm yeah, a voter. Okay. So it's for the full season. So how LeBron just had one of the worst months of his career. January. Yeah. Which by his standards was bad. It, it was statistically it wasn't that bad. 23.7 seven, assists, yeah. seven rebounds, 51% shooting. But since Christmas, so ba basically for a Since month that stretch, Warriors loss on Christmas Day, he was the worst in the NBA in real plus minus. Right. 518th out of 518 players. Now, I agree with you that I think he's going to have a tremendous second half of the season. And you remember a few weeks ago I did my MVP you know, yeah, uh, I front, forgot. Who did front you have? runners right now. I had LeBron number one, but here's why. Because James Harden had just gotten hurt, was out a few games, and the projection was that he would be out for four to six weeks. So that's basically missing 20-some-odd games. Yep. So I was thinking, okay, if Harden misses 20-some-odd games, you're not going to be MVP doing that. Only one person in history since the ABA-NBA merger has done that. M missed more than 11 games and actually been MVP. So that was why I had LeBron ahead of Harden. But now that Harden came back early, only missed seven games. You, you, you mentioned LeBron averaging 30 over the last four. Hard Harden's averaging 31 for the entire season. It's been a good run for James Harden. Le Harden so, is leading so the league. You... Hold on. Leading the league in scoring. Yes. Second in assist. One mm -hmm. ahead of LeBron been James. Yeah. And let me, let me just give you this. James Harden is the anchor. And I know Chris Paul's been great, but Chris Paul's missed 18 games. 18 games. All right, so what the, James Harden has played without him for those games. James Harden is orchestrating the most efficient, the best offense to date in NBA history. Very, very good note. Let me tell you the other top, the other four in the top five. Second, the Los Angeles Lakers, the wow. Showtime Lakers. Magic, baby. Magic, Kareem, James Worthy. Byron Scott. Yes. Third, the 19th or 2016-17 Golden State oh, yes. Warriors. One of the greatest teams in Steph, NBA history. Yes, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green. Fourth, the 1992 Chicago Bulls of Michael Jordan. And Scottie Pippen. In a watered-down NBA. <laughs> no, whatever. It was there. the best players in the world at the time. That's all I know. Fifth, the Larry Bird, 1988, 87, 88, Boston Celtics. Yes. And James Harden is orchestrating an offense with Eric Gordon, Clint Capella, Trevor Ariza, and Chris Paul for all but 18 games. You forgot one That name. is ahead of that group. You forgot Who? Mike D'Antoni. It's his yeah, sister. that's fine. Right. His uh, any other of the other four uh, teams I mentioned was in, were any of them coached by Mike D'Antoni? I don't believe so. Okay, then then just <laughs> let's just x out that point oh, he yeah. just made. Mike D'Antoni doesn't that matter. Means, okay. No, well, his other offenses didn't get in the top five. Okay, you want to expand it to Steve top Nash, ten? Steve Nash, Stoudemire, Sean Marion didn't put it in the, the top, top five. five. We don't know. Are they seven? 
But anyway, I don't continue. know what they are. Continue they are in with the top your stats. Five. Continue with your stats. This is a no-brainer. If James Harden avoids injury or serious injury and continues to play at this pace, there's virtually nothing LeBron James can do over the second half to put him ahead of James Harden. If Harden gets hurt, if Harden falls off, and LeBron just plays tremendously, maybe. maybe. But right now, it is far and away, far and away, James Harden okay. as the MVP. Right. For very, very good case. Uh, um, uh, uh, I applaud you for that. Well done. Are you, you remember what uh, happened you last got, you year? You actually got something else yeah, to say? Yeah, I do, I do, I do. Do you remember last year, the, uh, the MVP voters were wowed by Russell Westbrook's Stats, well, he did amazing. Win. He First did win. Guy to average a triple double in forty years, fifty years. I mean, it was unbelievable. They were wowed by that. And then what happened in the first round of the playoffs? It's a regular no, it season. Don't matter. even bring up the playoffs. Just, okay, don't that's even fair. bring up the playoffs. That's it's fair. a regular season award. The first round of the playoffs comes. Russell Westbrook jacks up shots. They get bounced. Just stop. That's fair. And that's guess fair. what I mean, happened? All the voters watched LeBron James eviscerate the East. Totally dismantle the Raptors and everybody. And they said, man, we got hoodwinked. We fell no, victim. Nobody said that, All honestly. the voters said, dang, we, held, we fell victim to fall in for the numbers. Russell Westbrook, he was great, but man, look at LeBron. He's the best player in the league. That's what they said. They're going to say it again. Because, yes, James Harden, no doubt, his numbers have been tremendous. Rockets are uh, the most efficient offense in the league. They are outstanding. But the best player this season, LeBron was for the first third. Then uh, you you admitted that LeBron was number no, one. He no, was the leader. No, I didn't admit that. You said that. I said you had him number James one. James Harden was projected okay, to so miss at the, twenty something games. At the one third checkpoint, LeBron was number one. That's what you said. Because James okay. Harden was projected so then James to miss Harden takes over from Christmas to now. If Harden and was LeBron not projected, is going to finish would... strong over the final twenty five games and take the award. Look, first of all, he's 33, by the way. I'm a, I'm a voter, putting up obscene numbers. I'm a voter, and I know many of the voters. Nobody was saying oh, that. They all came you on Coward like Show. You act like that's the first time. Nobody said Russell Westbrook was better than LeBron James. If we just say who's the best player in the league, it's LeBron James. Yes, I had Harden. Should just we? so we know, I had Harden as the MVP last year. I didn't have a ballot because Broussard won't get me on the list. But I had Harden number one in the MVP. Continue, sir. Should we? It, it's not who's the best player in the league. If that's the case, let's just give out the award before the season starts. To Kevin Durant this We know year, it's right? LeBron James. Okay? Oh. No, you act like last year was the first time an MVP winner had struggled or lost in the playoffs. Dirk Nowitzki had done it. Nobody was saying, oh, Dirk shouldn't have won the award. It's a regular season award. Okay? Plenty of times... A t uh, an MVP loses early in the playoffs. And nobody was expecting O'KC to win in the playoffs. They I were they were the lower seed. Who they lose to? The Houston James Rockers. And the Rockets. Rockets yes. They were supposed to. People would have been shocked if they had beaten the Rockets. MVP couldn't get by the Rockets. Oof. So, okay. so is that all it, you got? I mean, because no, I'm ready to go I to mean, Josh on the scoreboard. Look, look, I mean, <laughs> look. I mean, I know Josh is with me. I don't even know that we have to I go. Mean, he's got a new team, Houston dude. Is have you seen 40, Jordan Clarkson? Have you seen the celebrations? I'm you, loving it. I Houston am loving it. Houston has the second best record in the NBA. Cleveland is ranked Who's first? third Who's first? in. Uh, I, yeah, they're I, half game behind I, I, Golden yeah, State. Just check. Cleveland's third in the Eastern Conference. For now. You don't erase that. It's not the MVP of... April, April and March. Mm -hmm. It's the MVP of the entire Body season. Body of work matters. Yeah. Yes, it matters. Let's go to the scorecard. I, I mean, I, if, if feeling confident here, people. Josh, I look. <laughs> look, he's if like, you, he's like, if you vote McIntyre here, we I'm gonna just replace it. See, is, that's look, what I'm up against, folks. LeBron is the best player in the world. I, no, no argument <laughs> there. That's why. But. You gonna overlook he's not a going month to and win. And a half? That's why he's not going to win the award. Is because he took off 25 games. He didn't flex his muscle. What are the criteria you'd want from MVP? Winning record. Who's who has the better record? James Harden. Who has the better stats? James Harden in points and assists and with the, the two things. PR. Whatever it is, and he didn't take off 
two months of the season and let his team suffer so he could get, you know, new personnel. Let's not. I, th- I agree that the race the is going to be closer. The locker room was toxic. He was ruined by all the clowns. James Harden is a well, clear-cut favorite. I mean, hey, if you want to go that route, fine. That's a knock. We'll agree to disagree, Bruce. No, hey, no. You know what? Josh is the final say. Yeah, Josh is the final Take say. Take it back. Take that. it back. No, no, that's not happening. <laughs> Moving on to... Uh, Thank you for the being son, fair, Josh. Thank the you. son of your best Not friend, biased. LeVar Ball. We're going to talk some Lonzo Ball if that's good with you. Um, we saw what happened this week. LeVar lobbed a grenade from Lithuania right into the Lakers' locker room. Pow! Everything went pop. Magic's head exploded. Luke Walton ha- out on the front lines having to answer question. Lonzo's injured. He's not going to be participating in All-Star Weekend. Convenient. I've had enough of Lord Varball. I know you could text him and say that. I know you guys are buddies. You're probably going out to dinner tonight. Um, I think we're at the point where every month there is a Lavar Ball controversy. He's going after Luke Walton. Isaiah Thomas, you better be ready. He's coming after you. I, we don't need these headaches. I like Lonzo Ball. I think he would have a great future with the Lakers if his dad would shut his big mouth. But I think the latest comments about I'm going to force these brothers uh, Jello and LaMelo on the team. I think it's over. I think the Lakers should seriously start making calls about trading Lonzo Ball. Really? Your thoughts. Well, look, obviously I can't defend what LeVar has said. You're not going to defend your guy? It, it's, look. Oh, jeez. It's ridiculous, okay? You can't defend what he said. I'm going to tell LeVar right now. Jello is not getting drafted. <laughs> Jello is not getting drafted. And LaMelo and LaJello, LiAngelo and Lonzo will never be on the same NBA team. Okay. If they, if you are dead set on them playing together, it's going to have to be in Europe for some team that just wants to sell tickets. Or Australia. Or, or, or yeah, or China. Some, some minor league. I mean, country. seriously. That's, that's just a fact. All right. That's, that's, I'm trying to help. Like, that's not happening. Now, where I disagree with you at, is that the Lakers need to seriously consider... Well, no. I think they need to have a conversation. Magic, Rob Palenka need to sit down and start considering... With Lonzo? No, with each other. Okay. And their front office and their their brain trust and say, look, we have to do something about this because we're not going to put up with this for the next rest of this season or seasons going ahead. Let's stop rest of this season because June is important. We can agree on that. The Lakers have freed up cap room. They've been rejected yep. for years yep. by big-name free agents. Paul George and LeBron, we don't know if it's going to happen. Okay, the, the Cavs have changed everything. We'll see. But they're available. They're going to get a meeting. You don't need this LeVar nonsense, well, where, man. Where I disagree with you is that they should start calling teams now and seeing what they can get for it. The, what I, the way I think they should handle it, number one, I think Luke has been great. I think Luke should. You don't want a, an NBA head coach going back and forth with a parent of a player. That's just not a good look. It would. You you think you said Luke Walton has to answer all these questions about Levar Ball? Uh, How do you day. think it would go if he went back at Levar? It would really keep going on and on and on and on. What? It's not Luke's job to handle that. His job is to coach the team and get them prepared he to win. He doesn't deserve this. No, he doesn't. It's Magic Johnson's job as the president of the team. So what I think they should do is Magic should go, should meet with LeVar and tell him, look, you have got to stop making these controversial comments about the Lakers. It is messing up the locker room, and quite frankly, it's not helping Lonzo. Guys are going to look. I'm Magic Johnson. I know what an NBA locker room is like. You need to be a family. Guys need to be able to confide in you. Guys need to be able to trust you. None of the teammates are going to confide in Lonzo because they think he's going to run back and tell you everything. the point guard's supposed to be the leader. you might say something publicly. And look, I love you. I like what you're about. I like that you're trying to start businesses. I like that you love your kids and you're involved in their life. That said, we cannot have this. And if you can, if you make another controversial comment about the Lakers, you can say the Lakers are playing great. I hope they win. I like Kuzma, whatever. If you make another controversial comment, 
I'm going to trade Lonzo. Okay. You won't have to worry about See, Chris, three years from is, now that do, that works taking with him away. Same I will trade him. Rational human beings. You're not dealing with somebody like that. You know what he's going to do? If he, if he is going to take this and then go say, oh, they don't want me talking about the Lakers anymore. He's going to make a big to do you know about what, it. Then? Matt, then I'm on the horn. What can I get for Lonzo? Well, I would prefer my Why route. Do it now? I would prefer my route because guess what? As soon as you start calling around teams, it's going to leak out to the reporters. It's going to get out there. Lakers talking about Lonzo trade. Whoa. LeVar's going to sit up, say, whoa, big ball of red. Big ball of red. We need L.A. I'm going to zip it. I'm I'll gonna call give you Magic and apologize. Chance. Well, I think you need Too a wake-up call. I don't want an apology. You got kids, Chris. I want, I want you to just do you what's got best kids. for your son. You know how you raised your kids. Yeah. In tough moments when they're back talking, because it happens. I'm dealing with it sometimes. And, and, and they're being like demanding kids. They need a wake-up call. Grounded for a week. Done. No questions asked. Get out of my face. Wake up. You can't just, all right, let's have a meeting. LaVar's not going to listen. I'm get, look, I'm giving you a chance. And I'm going to tell you. How many chances when you, is this? When you see the leaks. When you see the leak. No, I haven't given an ultimatum yet. I just trusted you. You, you made me pancakes. They were good. <laughs> and you told me you weren't going to be involved in all this. But you didn't listen. You, you, you went against it. So you're saying last I chance. Met with, yes, this is it. Okay. I don't want any apology. When you see the rumors that he's going to Utah or that he's going to Orlando, don't call me and apologize. Look, any, you can trade anybody. Okay? Somebody would trade for him. Um, the thing is, it's probably going to be lower value. <laughs> You, because I just whipped you. You no, know that. Just, it's probably gonna be lower value. <laughs> no, and not down, or, or, or or was that supposed to scare me? Like, <laughs> I love, I'm making Jay back mad. Let I me love back this up. Discussion. Look, if the Lakers, with arguably, and I think actually this is true. It's just popped in my mind. But arguably, the most beloved player. In NBA history, running the Lakers. Is that fair? I mean, Magic, arguably. He's up there. Arguably. He's up there. The most beloved player in NBA history running the organization. And it's a great organization. The best organization in battle, or the, you know, the glamour franchise of the NBA. They give you the glamour courtside seats. So, yeah, you love them. If they can't silence LeVar Ball, what do you think? That little old average franchise with a no-name yeah. GM See, that's what is you're going to be able Phoenix, to do. Phoenix, Orlando, they embrace that drama. People are oh, talking nice about them. Oh, it's for a few weeks. No, 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 no. Dude, but what? when you're still losing and he's talking about, I need to coach the team. People they are, need to get Jello and Melo up about in here. franchises that haven't won anything You think ever. the NBA is a joke? They haven't got to the playoffs. They want to be Name in the discussion. They had not won anything. I mean, what have the Orlando Magic won in the last five years? La okay, last five last years. Last ten the, years. They, they had one finals Shaq, appearance. They had, yeah, and they everybody had leaves Dwight them. Howard. Everybody leaves them. Hold on. Look Jason. at the Phoenix Suns. What have they done in the last five years? Since Steve Nash oh, and them left. Well, now you change your, your, your statement. These are teams that want to be in the discussion. They're owners. The discussion for what? People oh. want to. Owners want to be in the discussion. Jason, do you think the NBA is a circus? These teams are trying to win. Run a business, get to the playoffs, put butts in the seats. Yes, it's a business. Marketing matters. How long is that going to last? Huh? Some teams haven't even tasted it. Let's go to the scorecard here. I'm feeling good about this one. Okay, you threw out Phoenix a lot. You didn't say who. Who, yeah, yeah. who are they who, trading? Who, We're gonna who, go. are they trading? <laughs> who? Who are they trading for Lonzo Ball? And if you say it, you're gonna be the laughing I, I, stock I, of YouTube. Can you just Let's say just go it? to the score. No, you, <laughs> you threw it out there. <laughs> who? Who's Phoenix I, I trading? Who, who are they gonna give up for Phoenix Lonzo Ball? Phoenix is desperate enough for a star with it quality, Lonzo. Uh, Devin Booker's a star. You're, Nobody's paying to see him. A one-dimensional shooting guard. I love one Devin dimensional? Booker. One-dimensional? You ain't never watched the yeah, Devin I've Booker game. That's one more dimensional. Lonzo and the Lakers <laughs> pick. They acquired it from the Cavs, 25-ish. Two first-round picks. Okay. If Devin yeah. Booker can go to Wait. Phoenix and say, I'm not going to be signing with you guys when my deal's up in two years. I know. You don't like okay. it. That's fine. Josh, let's go to the scorecard okay, on the, the score Lakers. Card. Should they put Lonzo on the trade block? They... I'm going to try to ignore everything you just said because you <laughs> lost right there. <laughs> but 
The thing that we keep bringing up is Luke Wall and how he should handle this. I think Luke Wall should know how to deal with a crazy dad. Do you, you think, right? Like, maybe right. he should That's talk right. more. If That's anybody else point. in the whole world could deal with a crazy NBA dad, maybe Luke Wall should know how to speak up. For nah, that kind yeah. of thing. So you do think he should publicly say something? I think they got to do something to, to stop talking. Le- or stop with the Lavar nonsense. And to your point earlier. So what gets him to stop? Putting, saying, sending him to Milwaukee, sending him to Phoenix. But not for Devin Booker. Okay, okay. Phoenix right, and well, we Milwaukee. We can get deep into that next week. They're not yeah. getting those big market so, games if Lonzo's in Phoenix or Orlando or any of It's because he's in L.A. Right. And because his dad runs his mouth. So That's a big should part the Lakers put Lonzo on the he's trade market? He's trying to find a way to give you a win. I'm... I I'm say yes, you say no. I'm ignoring it's the second half. Survey says. He's said. ignoring all you said, but trying to find a way to give you a win. I'm yeah, you're, giving you the I don't need the charity victories. You speaked it into existence, I don't to quote need LeVar. the charity victories. Moving on. Uh, uh, the NBA Rookie of the Year race I'm is getting, getting a, exciting. I'm getting a headache. Yeah, man. you are. Yeah, I know. I mean, I'm like that defend. I'm like Patrick Beverly, just <laughs> hounding you. Hounding you. Like, how he hounded Lonzo on opening night. <laughs> rookie of the Year race is getting hot. Ben Simmons has been the leader. I mean, you handed him the award, I believe, like early November on this podcast. It was early November. You said Ben Simmons, Rookie of the Year. I think Donovan Mitchell's overtaken him. Donovan Mitchell has led the Jazz to 10 straight wins, shooting 44% from the field, 35% from three, averaging 19 and a half, doing unbelievable things as the, and this is key, number one option in Utah, carrying them. I know Gobert is nice defensively. Joe Ingles is a good player. Donovan Mitchell's carrying the Jazz in the deep west. Uh, they're right outside the playoff spot right now. I would, I'd say Donovan Mitchell has overtaken Ben Simmons. There's still 25 games, but right now, I got D. Mitch, number one in rookie of the Look, year. Look, Donovan Mitchell is playing fantastic. He has really closed the gap. Close, oh, and close the I gap. do think a lot of people probably thinking like you are, and 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 understandably so, because it's nip, it's neck and neck. But at this point, I still would go with Ben Simmons because it's called the Rookie of the Year Award, not the Rookie of a Nice Little Stretch for Your Team (laughs) Award, okay? Rookie of the Year. Ben Simmons is the quarterback of the seven-seeded Philadelphia 76ers. Mm -hmm. Utah, with the 10 straight wins, are they in the playoffs? They're in the West. Are they in the playoffs? They're in the West. They're in the West. Okay. They're in the, the no, Western Conference not. has a playoff yeah. race. Are they in it? They're in it. I mean, they're not in, in, in the, the top in the eight. Top, okay, they're, they're not. not. They're if in the, the race. playoffs ended today, they if would the not be in the season ended today, they're one and a half out, I think. Ben Simmons would still be playing. Okay? Now, it is a regular season Wait, award. Can you add Ben but Simmons the and Joel Embiid? Because right now, who's the Batman on the 76ers? Who is the Batman on the Showtime Lakers? No, 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 no. We're not comparing the Lakers. We're comparing the Jazz and the Sixers. Because he has a great center and feeds that center. You said Joel Embiid was the second coming of Elijah Wan. Okay? And Joel Embiid's averaging like 23 and 11. Amazing. Joel Embiid is fantastic. He's is the best he's player the number on that one team. Op- okay, he's the best player no on question. that team. There's no question. So uh, I just ben wanted to Simmons, get that out there for the jury. Ben Simmons is a critical piece. He is awesome. To I love Ben team. Simmons. How many, ben three point- How many threes he make this year? I'm just curious. James about more than three pointers. How many three pointers has he made this year? I don't. Season? Not many. Zero. Okay, fine. Zero. Fine. Zip. How zero. Many is he taking? Stingy with De Niro. How many is he taking? Too many. Not, no. Uh, he's not, taking not, like a bunch maybe of five, like, at the end something of like that. He doesn't take many. Like, he's like 0 for 15. Let me threes. read you a few things. Ben Simmons, 16 points a game. Yeah, I love him. 7.7 rebounds. 7.3 assists. Leads the Sixers in assist and steals. No, great and shoots 53% yeah. from the floor. He's a, he's Very a efficient. Nice offensive player. And he, oh, and defense too. Defense don't, too. Don't, don't, don't get away from the defense. What do you got? He's 31st in the entire league, not among rookies, not among point guards. In real plus minus. 31st. You, you love to use some hold real on, plus. Hold That's on. a second real plus minus reference in the podcast. And he's 31st wow. in defensive real plus minus. Woo! So he's getting it done on both Where's ends Donovan of the Mitchell in there? Uh, 92nd okay. in real plus minus, which isn't horrible for a rookie, but it's a big difference. Yeah. Ben Simmons, it's, by the it's way, three is, times worse is he 21 than, than Ben Simmons. I think Ben Simmons now, is 21. Now, uh, look, I, Donovan Mitchell is playing great. If he were to win the award, I would not be like, that's crazy. Okay, How let me, okay. But right Before now, we for go to me, scorecard. it's Ben yes, Simmons. If they were redrafting the 2017 NBA draft, Ben Simmons was 2016. 
Does Donovan Mitchell go first overall? Ahead of Fultz, obviously. Ahead of Tatum. Does he go? I don't know that's if he goes how ahead of good Tatum. Mitchell has been. I don't know this that year. he goes ahead of Tatum. He's been great, but I don't know that he goes ahead of Tatum. And and if you throw Ben Simmons in well, that ben draft, Simmons. he doesn't go ahead of Ben Simmons. Does it? Does who? I think who I, you drafted I need, first? I need Donovan Mitchell. Looks like a young who, Dwayne Wade. Who? Okay. I don't know. I okay. don't know. Would if you, you rather can have ben Magic Simmons Johnson over. or Dwayne Wade in a Wade. league where shooting is premium and matters the most? It's a three-point league. Go ask the Warriors and Rockets. I take Donovan Mitchell, and over, I love over Ben Simmons. Simmons. I like Ben Simmons a lot. Who would you take, I would, Donovan I, right Mitchell now, or Ben? If, right now, if I'm you, taking. If you could draft and Ben Simmons and Donovan Mitchell were in the same draft, which one would you I'm take? I'm taking Donovan Mitchell right now. You right now. You don't believe uh, Right now, what's, I do. What's the right now mean? Well, I mean, he's ascended from where he was at the beginning Does of the that, season. I mean, what's he the right now mean? 25 games. Does that mean really long term I think Simmons is going to be better? Well, I mean, Ben Simmons That's shows up next like. year with a Kawhi Leonard type three-point shot. It's game on. He don't have that game. He's not going to be good even if he don't get a three-point shot. If he gets a three-point shot, it's what if he doesn't? lights is out he for still the not, He's still not going to be good? Well, I don't think he'll fulfill his potential if Ben Simmons doesn't get a three-point shot. But he'll still be great. Yeah. He'll still be a Donovan premier Mitchell all-star. Donovan Mitchell is great. Not will be. He is great and, right and now. Simmons is it? Simmons is close. So, uh, if this is splitting hairs, I'm excited you for the scorecard the topic. here. Yeah, I know. Goldie. <laughs> oh, boy, everybody's silent. Oh, my God. See, this is what we do, folks. We pick Look, the topics I like, that are going to. I like Donovan. I'm not. This is. I like Donovan a lot. And I'm I like saying, Simmons a lot. I still would take Ben Simmons. Life. It seems pretty similar to the MVP chat we had where there's two guys and the guy's coming on strong at the end. Yep. How do you finish? How you finish strong. matters. Yeah, just, that's oh, like me. I'm long. Mr. Fourth but Quarter. He's the, Mr. The first long. Quarter. It's the like, rookie. Oh, I'm, I'm Mr. I say, that's con- fine. I'll come I'm Mr. The- consistent. I'm a closer, people. I will finish things. Sorry, Goldie. Go ahead. You, you are the clo- oh, okay. <laughs> You're Right. Okay, you lost on that. You had me at the JV reverence. But it's a rookie of the year. Yes. Donovan struggled at the beginning. Ben's has been, ben has been like this perfect the whole time. If, he, if Donovan starts averaging 30 the last, like, 25 games, you know what? I would agree with you. But right now, today, Ben Simmons is the rookie of the year. Wow. We're going to have to open this up to the commenters at some point. The I YouTube, don't think you want to know what YouTube. the commenters say well, about they li- you They generally. liked me the last couple weeks. Oh, really? Nah, it's pretty clear. It must I'm be those muscle like shirts you've been oh. wearing. All right. Fun all-star chat. Good job. Well, Look for Broussard at the parties this week. With who? Maverick Carter, LeVar Ball, who else? Uh, out here in L.A. You hang with Jamie Foxx again? Am I going to get invited to any of this stuff? Heck, you know. Not when I know those Lakers muscle shirts you be wearing. <laughs> you change the gear, you might be able to hang. Oh, no. You come out like this, and you, I might take yeah, you all out. All right, okay. All right, all right. All right. Gotta get to the store. All right. That was it. Knocked down, Jay. Once again, I knocked him down two out of three times. You're getting better, though. You're getting better, even though I'm Josh was searching. I'm gonna get a he w. was <laughs> digging deep to get you a win. But we hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the whole podcast. Kenya Martin was great. Hey, Mark. Controversial top five slam dunk performances of all time in the dunk contest. Are you leave Hit me Dave with what Brown you. Brown out of there with the pumping up the shoes. Come on. That was nice. So it was cute. It was cute. J.R. Ryder, East Bay Funk. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. Cedric Sabalos dunking with the. With the uh, and how about this one? How about Terrence Stansberry with the. One footed Statue of Liberty 360. I don't know. Who One of the most underrated dunks of all time. You weren't watching basketball at that time. All right, so, but we hope you enjoyed it. Go to iTunes Podcast, Apple Podcast, SoundCloud. Leave us a comment, leave us five stars. You've been in the zone. We hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>